Hey guys, welcome back to the welcome back to the journey. It's day three and day four solar update. I missed yesterday. I was trying so hard not to miss yesterday, but here's my my vitamin C uh, like powder that you put in your water so you feel better. And here's also a little bit of a stiffer neck. I wound up getting a sinus infection and also pinched a nerve in my neck yesterday. So I was like this all day yesterday, just in bed. I couldn't move to save my life. I was even thinking about doing a live video just so I didn't miss a day, but I figured let me get day three and day four in one video. So that's what um, that's what I hope to, to do right now. We made it. I mean, day three and day four, it went perfect. Um, I'll take you through some of the, the footage now and some of the stuff that not the footage, but I'll take you through the Tesla app so you can kind of check out what yesterday and what today looked like, um, how long it took the batteries to get uh, filled up and how much solar it needed. The feedback from, obviously not a lot of people are watching these videos. These are kind of just more me documenting the process, but uh, you guys that have wrote a comment and also ask some questions um, even some mistakes I made, I, I held up the iPad and I showed 9.3 kW was what the solar produced, but it must have been a screenshot just from like the morning. So that, that wasn't a reflection of the full kW. Uh, we actually produced 43 kW that day, which was how much it took to charge the batteries up. But um, let's jump right into it. So we'll dive right into the iPad. And I believe we're screen recording now. Let me make sure because the last time I did this, it wasn't recording. So let me check here. Um, screen recording, cancel. Okay, cool. So we'll start with yesterday. And right now I'll shut off the power walls and we'll look at the solar. So yesterday's solar energy, we produced 30.1 kilowatt hours our sun power panels on the roof and i'll try to go slow because i don't want to confuse and make this like way too quick but uh, you could see when the solar woke up so we this system woke up at right here 7 25 a.m that's because we got the sun power panels that work really well in low light conditions that's why we use those so it woke up at 7 25 we were producing good all day long. I have an east facing roof. Our top production for the day was at 2 p.m. in the afternoon, we produced 8.1 kilowatt hours. That's pretty awesome. Fall days over here, not, I mean, September, what, September 17th and 16th is what this is dating. So this is September 16th. So you could see here, and then our drop off is at solar goes to sleep 6 30 6 35 sunset today where we are is uh 6 40 so that's pretty good especially since the roof is facing directly uh east which is the opposite way of sunset now i'll shut the solar off and we'll look at the batteries i'll keep the solar on okay so we see here, the home was using uh, the batteries all night long. All night long we're using them. And then right here is when the sun kicks, kicks into action where it actually takes over and we're, we're really running the entire home off solar power and that takes place at 8.15. So from 8.15, the home is running off solar and we're charging the batteries. Charging, charging. You can see that at that two o'clock time frame, we had a good dump off of solar power into those batteries. And then the batteries were right here, 445. The batteries were filled up at um, at four o'clock. And the reason I could tell they were filled up at four, mostly because I remember it from my app, but then also you could tell here, you could see right here, look at the solar. The solar just drops off. Solar stops 
and the batteries stop right here, it kind of flat lines. When I say flat lines, like you could see on here that the bell curve of the solar going down and the bell curve of the batteries underneath, it kind of just stops. That means the batteries are completely full and there's nowhere else for the solar power to go. The home's got enough, uh, the home's being powered by the batteries. The batteries are completely full, so it shuts the batteries off. It doesn't shut the batteries off, but it stops, shuts the solar power off because there's nowhere for that energy to go. So it's just dissipating it. And then, um, this is when, you know, what time is it here? It's uh, 4.30. And then right around here, seven o'clock, where my wife and I were getting home from work, and then we're starting to use the uh, the storage all throughout the night. My wife tonight asked me, "Are we still running off the batteries? Is that still going on?" I was like, "We've been doing it. This is day four, and we haven't sacrificed anything. Everything has been running. I mean, there's a flat screen TV uh, behind you." There's another one upstairs that my wife is watching. There's 37 LED lights in this basement. The pool pump is going. Right now what I'm seeing, it's the fall time. So it took, just from this graph here, you could see that it took until four o'clock for the batteries to fill up with enough energy. So I've been going to bed at like 70% battery to get through the night, which is pretty, pretty awesome. So, um, yeah, that's really easy right now. I know in the winter time, it's gonna get a lot tougher. I don't know if I'm gonna continue this journey through the winter time, and the reason is, is you could see right here, at four o'clock, the solar shut down because the batteries were filled up. If I was connected to the grid, all that solar would be going back to the utility company. So that sums up yesterday, and now I'm gonna go to today. It's kind of interesting. Look at today's chart. Look at these spikes. Today was a sunny day. It was beautiful out today. And the batteries were filled up by 11 a.m. today. That's how beautiful of a day it was out today. And this is consistent with what it was doing during the summertime. So, that's pretty awesome, but I'll take you through. Let me shut the batteries off. The solar woke up at 6.50 in the morning. Our high for the day was at 10.55. We produced 9.9 .9 kilowatts. It definitely would have been higher if we were connected to the grid where the power had somewhere else to go besides the batteries, because right now it's nine o'clock and the batteries are filled up. So there's nowhere else for that power to go. So you could see here, I just turned on the storage. The batteries filled up by 11.05. Now, as the batteries discharge, the home is using it, the solar is replenishing it. So that's why it looks like, I don't know, what do you call those diagrams that are like, watching people's heart that go up and down. It's like the beep, beep, beep. That's, that's what this is doing right now. Batteries discharging, solar's turning back on to charge it. Batteries discharging, solar's turning back on to charge it. Batteries discharging, solar. So that constant process is going on throughout the entire day until four o'clock. And then at four o'clock, the battery is uh, still fully charged, but now the sun is gone. So now we're running off full batteries. Um, yeah, that's day two. Right now, we are currently at, uh, where is it, uh, today? Right now, we're at 71% battery, and it is 9.53 at night. You can see the X on the screen still. We're still in backup mode, and, uh, We'll keep you guys updated. Keep the questions coming, keep the feedback going. It's, uh, it's now going on day five and you don't wanna like be like cocky, like, oh, this is, it's so easy, like these power walls could do it. No, it, it definitely, the only reason that it's working so smooth right now 
we've had beautiful sunshine and um, we've had a September that started off really rough weather-wise, but right now it's been beautiful to close out the end of the month. So we've definitely had a good September and today, the past two days were beautiful where at night we can go to bed with a 70% battery charge and not have to worry about anything. I know in the winter this was definitely going to be an issue, uh, but we'll We'll definitely do some tests like this in the winter to check it out and see how it goes. Please like the video if you liked it. If not, don't like it. Please subscribe to the channel and please share this with anyone that you think is interested in solar plus storage. My full-time job is I own a solar company and these are the systems we design for people's homes on a daily basis. So it's kind of cool like for me to be doing this and experimenting on my home and showing uh, what what's possible on systems like this. And I posted something on Facebook, just you know, sharing one of the videos that I made. And I really feel this is the beginning of going from landlines to cell phones. There's no doubt about it. Um, this technology that we're doing right here, it's possible. I could have definitely gotten through the entire summer up until now doing what I'm currently doing. Yeah, we're in the Northeast, the winter, I definitely have problems and we'll test it out. Uh, this coming winter, but this is pretty phenomenal what's possible with this technology if you have the site conditions if you have um, You know a home that's you know suitable for solar with no trees around it if you have uh, You know space for batteries and you know not everyone is people live in townhouses and apartments where community solar is probably the best option for you, but for someone that's in a, a home with a south facing roof and they're paying a utility bill, it definitely, definitely makes sense even just to do the solar. And then, you know, if you wanna wait for the battery technology to get a little, little more affordable, that, that's even possible. But we're signing out for the night. We'll keep you updated tomorrow on day five. I'll also give a tour of my house at some point so you could see all the things that we're running that we're really, we're not sacrificing anything. and. There's definitely people living upstairs. You don't have to think I'm in like just some dungeon where only the lights are on down here. Signing out. Have a great night, everybody.